This morning, as we prepare for the time of taking the Lord's Supper, I'd like us to consider Psalm 118. Just a passage that as I prepared my own heart for Easter last weekend, it just resonated and just stuck with me. And I, I wanted to spend some time there this morning. It's one of the most quoted passages in the New Testament, if you didn't know that. And and its role in Jewish history is significant because Psalms 113 through 118 were actually sung at every Passover meal. Um, In particular, Psalm 118, which we'll be looking at this morning, was likely the hymn referenced in Matthew 26 as being sung by Jesus and his disciples immediately after he had given them the instruction concerning the Lord's Supper. This psalm would have been the capstone of the evening on the high point of the Jewish calendar. And every Jewish child would have known this psalm in a similar way to children today know the Christmas songs that we sing every year. And in the opening verses, give us a view into the psalmist's prayer for the people of Israel. Look at verse 1. Give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, and his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let Israel say, his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let the house of Aaron say, his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let those who fear Yahweh say his loving kindness endures forever. The psalmist's desire and prayer is that the people of Israel would see the goodness and loving kindness of Yahweh and respond in gratitude and in praise and in the fear of God. In verses 5 through 6, the psalmist emphasizes those who trust in Yahweh, those who fear him, and they don't need to fear man. Yahweh is trustworthy. In verses 8 and 9, Yahweh is his refuge. And in verses 14 and 21, it is in Yahweh that the psalmist finds his salvation. But then there is a peculiar turn in verse 22. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Well, the New Testament repeatedly quotes this passage and identifies this rejected stone as Jesus, rejected by the nation of Israel who would be the foundation stone for all who would believe in him. And right here in Psalm 118, we have this glimpse of the coming rejection of Jesus. And Jesus precisely chooses the exact timing of his instruction concerning the Lord's Supper and his broken body and blood symbolized by the Lord's Supper to be immediately followed by the singing of this psalm, which would anticipate his rejection that would occur later that very evening. How many times had the scribes and the Pharisees sung these words in their own homes with their families? The ones who would reject Jesus were all too familiar with these words. But would this ultimate rejection to which the psalm pointed to be an impediment to God's plan? Far from it. Look at verse 23. This is from Yahweh. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which Yahweh has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Yahweh, save Oh, Yahweh, succeed. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahweh. We have been blessed from the house of Yahweh. Yahweh is God, and he has given us light. The psalm anticipates this glorious day of salvation in which God would succeed in saving his people through the rejection of his son. And the psalmist enlists Israel to rejoice in what God would accomplish for his people through the rejection of his choice stone, which when God would actually give light to the people, verse 27, and the people would rightly call out, as we see in verse 26, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahweh. The people of Israel understood this psalm, spoke of the coming Messiah, who would come in the name of the Lord. That is what they cried out during Jesus's 
entry into Jerusalem at the beginning of the week, if you recall, Matthew 21, says the crowds were crying out saying, Hosanna to the Son of God, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were fully aware that this passage spoke of their coming Messiah. They even cried these words out to their Messiah. But did they believe them when they sang them? Were they looking to him for their greater salvation from sin? They had been singing about this day since childhood. But when the time came, they rejected him whom they sang about. They wanted perhaps a Messiah who would avenge their enemies, who would save them on their own terms. But they didn't see their true need to be rescued from their sin. They didn't embrace the truth of a Messiah that would suffer and die. The words were familiar, but they weren't understood and they weren't believed. Later that week, these same words were on the lips of Jesus, actually as a pronouncement of judgment on Israel and Jerusalem as the leaders of Israel rejected him over and over again. Matthew 24, 39, when pronouncing judgment on unbelieving Israel, Jesus said, For I say to you from now on, no, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Israel rejected the Messiah, and they would remain under judgment until they would embrace Jesus and proclaim from their heart, not just with their lips, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What about us? In many respects, last week marked the high point of the Christian calendar. We celebrated Easter, Resurrection Day, we dress our best, we take family pictures, we enjoy meals with friends and family, and for some, Last week may have been one of the few weeks of the year that you actually came to a church service. And if you're here again this week, we're so glad you're here. And so last week, the death and resurrection of Christ were the focal point of the Christian world. But now I ask one week later, how do, you, do those truths resonate with you today? What difference did the resurrection of Christ have on your Monday and on your Tuesday has the same old story of the death and resurrection of Christ become so familiar that their significance is lost, just like Psalm 118 was every Passover for many. During this time in our service every week, we participate taking a piece of bread and drinking from a cup as visual reminders of the realities of Jesus' death. It's one thing to sing about it, but Jesus in his kindness actually gave us visible reminders of the realities of what took place on the cross. So when we crush the dry bread in our teeth, we remember the crushed body of Christ. When we drink from the cup, we remember that the blood that actually flowed from Jesus. We remember that he actually drank the penalty of sin that was for us. Jesus took it on, in, on his behalf or on our behalf the sin of everyone who would find their refuge in him. So the men are going to come forward now and distribute the elements of the Lord's Supper. You can come forward. and But if by your own admission, the meaning of these symbols is foreign to you, if you haven't embraced Christ as Lord to follow him from the heart and you haven't trusted in his death as the only means of your forgiveness or sin, please let the trays pass in front of you. Um, this is a special time for those who have actually embraced Christ Jesus as Messiah, and taking this meal together um, is a time for those who trust in him as the penalty for their sin. If this isn't you, we're thrilled you're here today. Um, we'd ask that you don't leave today without talking to someone after the service about what it means to place your faith in Christ. After the service, there will be people to my right, your left, at these doors, or you can find the person who brought you. But if you are a follower of Christ, this meal today is for you. Believers, we're going to take communion together in a few minutes. So when you receive them, go ahead and hold on to them. In the meantime, prepare your hearts by confessing any known sin before the Lord. Any areas where you recognize that your heart has been unaffected by the truth of the gospel. Where it has been unmoved at the cost of sin. The holiness of God, his loving kindness to crush his son Jesus for our sin. 
repent before the Lord and actually participate in this remembrance with us. We'll come back in a few minutes and I'll close the prayer and we'll take the communion, communion together.